Welcome to Mama Made Me Do It, where Southern folks tell funny stories about things our Southern mamas made them do. I'm Julia, and I'm here today with my friend, Mary Lane Haskell. She is a talented writer and singer and actor, and uh, she's probably best known for her role as Miss Moody, Dolly Parton's school teacher, in the television movie, um, Coat of Many Colors, yes. and the Emmy-nominated sequel, Christmas of Many Colors, Circle of Love. Well done. That's you a mouthful. That is a mouthful. <laughs> Just must have been fascinating to work with Dolly Parton. It was. I mean, I'm blessed that I've known her for a really long time. I've known her since I was about 10 years old. Wow. So she's like Aunt Dolly to me. Amazing. And, um, but she's always told me that I remind her of her school teacher. So when these films came about, she called and she said, I want you to come in and read. You've always reminded me of my teachers. So it was such an honor to be able to be a part of telling the story. Oh, that's amazing. Just Dolly, I'm available to audition for any roles you would like for me to play in Absolutely. your life as well. Just, <laughs> just throwing that in there. Anyway, so Mary Lane's here today um, because I want to tell me some stories about her, her Southern mama yes. and, and her story is kind of fascinating to me and this is why I wanted to have Mary Lane on because Mary Lane's family is actually from Mississippi. Yes and my mama was born and raised in Southeast Texas but my parents met at Ole Miss, the University of Mississippi and um, they were, um, my father was my mother's first state in college. Wow. And <laughs> um, the rest is history as they say. As they say. So um, they've moved back mm -hmm. to Oxford since then but I grew up here. That's right. That's what's amazing to me. So because Mary Lane's family's from Mississippi and she probably considers the home in Oxford really home now. Yes. Well, yes. home is where your mama is. That's right. Home so. is always where your mama is. In that, in that case, my home is Gaffney, South Carolina. Yes, ma'am. Mama, I have not forgotten. <laughs> um, and so, but what is fascinating to me when I met Mary Lane is that she was raised by Southern parents in Los Angeles. Yes. Now that must have been really interesting to be, for your mama to try to raise a Southern belle in La La Land. In Southern California. Yes. It definitely was, and it came with its own set of intricate issues. Um, for instance, <laughs> my name, Mary Lane. You know, that's, double names are foreign here in Southern California. You might as well be speaking a different <laughs> language. Everyone's like, now is it Mary, but Lane, is that your middle name? What is that? And I was like, oh, so it was so difficult in school. And I would come home and say, Mama, please, can't I just be Mary or Lane? Why does it have to be both? And she was like, baby, your great, 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 great grandmother was Mary Lane. And, and you need to be proud of that name. <laughs> so if you've got to spell it, then you spell it. So <laughs> every time someone would say, no, your name. And I would say, Mary Lane, M A R Y. <laughs> L-A-N-E, two words, no hyphen. Oh, I love it. I love it. And you know, that's what I love. And your, and your mom was right. She made you embrace your, your Southern double name. Because, Absolutely. I mean, that's the thing about the South. It's always, it's never just Betty or Susie. Or it's, you know, it's, it's Betty Sue. It's Betty Sue. <laughs> it's exactly. It's, it's Kathy Jo. It's, you know, Absolutely. Sue Ellen. It's, you know, you got to have double names. You have to. I think it's a rite of passage. It is. It so is. So whenever I meet one out here, a double name girl, I'm like, we have to stick together. See, I feel downright not loved, Mama, that I have just a plain old name. <laughs> no, yours is beautiful, though. Julia. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So tell me some other stuff your Mama made you do. Well, she would make me wear the outfits. And I know y'all mamas know the outfits, <laughs> the smocked dresses with the matching hair bows. Yes, and yes. And I would wear them. Oh, oh, look at there. There she is in now, ballet. Well, you know what they say. The bigger the bow, the more your Mama loves you. Oh, well, yes. Those are some <laughs> big bows. So, Mama, thank you. <laughs> now, thank did she you hand make love. the bows? Um, some of them. Some of them, yes. Some of them she did because you couldn't find them readily in Los Angeles. Yes. So she'd go down to the fabric district in downtown Los Angeles and get all these ribbons. <laughs> yeah, I was about to be like, say. what are you doing? And then I have my bow trees and all that. Oh, yes, um, where you store the hair bows, where you store the, the trees up on the wall. I bet y'all, I bet you ladies have bow trees. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. You had to have a place to store them. Oh, yes, of course. But I got sent to school in these outfits, and in kindergarten, the PE teachers would send home notes every day saying we don't want to see monogrammed bloomers when she's hanging upside down <laughs> on the jungle gym. Of course you're like, we don't want to see that. Of course they were little white ruffled bloomers with MLH. It was, right. it was the outfit. Because your mama didn't want anybody to get confused. It of might be somebody else. It might be somebody bloomers. else. <laughs> you know, you just never know. So I'm not saying it was my fault, but the next year the school instituted uniforms. Uh-huh, yes. Um, so I was in uniforms right. from first to sixth grade. Um, but it. kindergarten, my mama really ran wild with those outfits. So tell me something else your mama made you do. Well, 
always say yes ma'am and no ma'am yes. and yes sir and no that's sir. That's a good mom. I mean that is just that is lesson number one. That's southern law. It's southern <laughs> law but out here it's not necessarily received as well so I was in the first grade and my teacher um, was this amazing woman but she was from New York. Her name was Mrs. Blair and she talked like this. <laughs> And bless her heart. Bless her. <laughs> but she was so smart and so nice. But if she ever thought you were mouthing off, you got sent to the round table. Right. So I said yes, ma'am, to her. And she thought I was mouthing off and being sassy. sarcastic or right. sassy. Uh -huh. And I got sent to the round table. Now, my brother was the troublemaker. He right. was the one who got sent to the round table. So if my mama picked us up from school and she heard, Sam got sent to the round table today, but Mary Lane was an angel. It was always that. Mm -hmm. But this, this day, unfortunately today, it was Mary Lane who got sent to the round table. And my mother was like, this just isn't right. This, this, this is impossible. What did she do? Right. Well, she said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and my mother, I mean, you know Southern women. Yes. They don't show their anger publicly. No. Privately, they'll give you a whooping, but publicly, it's all decorum and it's all very kept yes. together and smiles and all that but my mama has one tell her jaw locks oh so if you just see that <laughs> and she might be smiling and she might be talking just like this but you know there's you better watch out yes and yes. she gave that teacher a piece of her mind and Good said this is how I am raising my children I know you can understand that Right. I know you can understand. I understand because, you know, when I I lived in New York City for a while when I was working in musical theater. Absolutely. And I said yes, ma'am, and, and no, ma'am, and yes, sir, no, sir, to, you know, in a job interview, an audition, just anywhere I, I did was. the same thing. And, and people were so offended. Yep. And I was, I realized I, this is not enough time left in the universe to explain to these people They're that really I'm trying to be polite. Gentility. <laughs> Gentility. It's, it's not dead. That's right. That's right. So tell me what else. What Another else? story from my childhood. Um, when I was three years old, I was in Mississippi for the summer with my family. And we were down in Greenwood, Mississippi mm -hmm. at an antique store. Of uh, course. I mean, obviously, what right. else do you do <laughs> in Greenwood, Mississippi on a Sunday? And I was running around causing all sorts of trouble and I fell and knocked out one of my front teeth. Right. And so for a couple of years it was cute. Like, oh, she's got a little toothless smile. How cute. But then when I got to about six years old, it just became very clear the teeth weren't coming back. Right. Like something so was going on. So you had this on. like permanent snaggle tooth I look. I did. This permanent <laughs> snaggle tooth look. I, my mama made me sing. All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth in the Christmas pageant every year. And I do mean every, every year. Because, <laughs> I mean, it made sense. She goes, well, hey, it's perfect casting. Listen, but if I it ain't right, don't, don't fix, fix it. it. Exactly. <laughs> Unless you get teased. And I was getting teased. So my mama, ever the Southern woman, was like, well, let's fix it. Let's find mm -hmm. a solution. So she would sit me on her lap every morning after doing my hair. And she would say, okay, baby, we just, we got to fix this until that tooth comes back in you got to smile like this. And mm -hmm. she would teach me how to smirk. <laughs> so that your teeth wouldn't show. So that my teeth wouldn't show. Show me your smirk. Oh, I love it. Oh, and there you are. There I she love is it. in this movie. Look there. There's you. That's a perfect smirk. I smirk to this day. We were smizing before smizing was a thing. She's just it. one of the most beautiful women and she inside is. and out. Now, your mama was former Miss Mississippi, am I yes. correct? Yes. 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 And yes. that was so accidental. I mean, her... Oh, look sisters. at her. Look oh, at her. Beautiful. Queen. She's stunning. Queen. Her sorority sisters at Ole Miss, Kai Omega. Um, <gasps> she's a Kai. She's a Kai. Oh. I'm a Kai. Oh. No. Hoot, 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 hoot. Hoot. Mama at high school. <laughs> hoot, hoot. I oh, love I love it. it. I love it. I did not know we were yes. sorority sisters. So her Kai sisters come in, and it was at a chapter meeting one day, and it was like the last thing on the list, and they're like, oh, by the way, Mary Donnelly, you sing, right? Mm -hmm. And she's like, yes, I sing. And they said, okay, great. We've entered you in the Miss University pageant. Don't worry about it. Kaios just always make the top 10. <laughs> she's like, okay. So she's borrowing a swimsuit. She's borrowing a gown. Uh -huh. On the night of the pageant, her sisters show up at her dorm room and are teasing and uh -huh. putting on the makeup. And she ends up winning the dang thing. Oh, well, good for her. So then everyone's panicked. Well, all right, Mary Donnelly. Okay. You know, Miss University always makes the top 10 in Miss Mississippi. So just we just got to get you ready and you just make the top 10. That's all you got to do. Wins the whole thing. I'm impressed. But coming from that background, do you know she was having 
me whooped up and putting my face on. Oh yes, teaching you to put a, makeup from yes, a very young from age. A very young my age. mama did too. Absolutely. Yes. There was even I think we've got a photo of her putting some lipstick on me. That I love was it. At one of my school plays. Yes. Um, and she was the music director, obviously, mm -hmm. so she saw me walking out. And I guess either backstage, one of the teachers had wiped off my lipstick, or I'd been eating, mm -hmm. probably eating, if we're being <laughs> honest. Um, and she was like, her lipstick's gone. And so she runs, um, she checks in with the band, runs to her purse, grabs her lipstick, yes. and comes over. And the teachers are like, is that really necessary? And she goes, oh. It's necessary. Everybody knows that Southern women cannot go without their lipstick. No. I mean, my mama says to me, even in my most, it doesn't matter how desperate and, and sad I am, mama's like, just slap on a little lipstick, honey. You'll be yes, fine. Yes, put, put your lipstick on and go. Are other women in your family, like, all about beauty and makeup like well, that as well? Well, I mean, my grandmother, um, my mother's mother, we call her dear. Dear, um, I love yes. It. Oh gosh, there we are. And I oh, mean, she's look at her. lovely. She is ninety-one years old. Wow, and ninety-one looks years like young. That. Ninety-one years young. Yes, <laughs> good for her. Well, and God looks bless like her. That, and I believe that it's because she moisturizes, and she's been moisturizing yes. her whole life. Moisturize. So when I was twelve years old, she just pulled out her pot of Revlon Eterna uh -huh, that you uh -huh. can get up at the Walmart, <laughs> and she just said, "Now you just slather, you slather, slather it on, and slather. you go up." Upward up, motion. Up, 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 Upward up. motion. Yes, and so you're never too you're never too young to moisturize. So I was no. the girl back in Los Angeles showing up at sleepovers <laughs> with my pot of Eterna and just doing it. Right. Everybody else was freezing panties and exactly. trying to be being silly. And you're like, I got and to I'm moisturize. Like skin, I can't get be skin. involved with y'all shenanigans. Exactly. I have beauty regimens. Now I know that your family is like a big old miss fan. They are, and bless it, I was destined for Ole Miss. I was mad to go to Ole Miss. I was, that was it. There uh -huh. we are at a football game. A hotty toddy, go Rebs. I, I um, understand that, that Ole Miss has the best tailgate. Oh, we do. The Grove yeah. is just so much fun. Oh, and there's little baby Mary Lane already <laughs> doing hotty toddy, gosh almighty, who in the hell are we? Hey. Um, <laughs> But I didn't end up going there. I right. ended up at New York University. I was accepted into the Tisch School of the Arts to study drama. Well, that's amazing, um, but it must was, have been hard on your parents. It was very hard on my parents, although they were so supportive of my dream. Wow. They were so supportive of my dream. But we get there, and they're moving me into my freshman dorm, which was in the East Village of New York City. And my father, I'm pretty sure my daddy, was in his seersucker coat. Of course. And my mama was in a three-quarter coat with a silk scarf. Sticking out like and sore like, thumbs in there. sore York. thumbs. I love it. And we're walking through what the quad is between the two towers, and there are kids smoking all sorts of stuff, and they're just like, where are we? <laughs> Um, <laughs> this is not civilized. This is not civilized. <laughs> but out of the corner of my mama's eye, she sees a resident assistant, an mm -hmm. RA, um, who has a t-shirt on that says, ask me about Greek life. And she says, thank you, Jesus. At least she can pledge. Yes, she can be in a sorority. At least she can be in a sorority. <laughs> so <laughs> runs up, tap, tap, tap. I just, I couldn't help but notice your t-shirt and it says, Greek life. So do you have K.O.? <laughs> and the girl goes, what? <laughs> And my mom, Ka Omega. Yes. Well, no. And then she's thinking, okay, well, dang, but try Delta. Try Delta. That could work. KD. Try Delta. Exactly. AD Pie. That's exactly <laughs> what happened. And she's going down like, try Delta. DG. KD. <laughs> Nothing. Kappa, Kappa Gamma. <laughs> Nothing I recognize. <laughs> and it's just, she's going down and down and down. And then finally the woman goes, Oh, yeah. We kind of, like, make up our own sororities here. Oh, no. No, that's not actually a Greek life. Right. See, and that was exactly... Some, that's some cockamamie Yankee <laughs> stuff. <laughs> See, that's, that, that's not sorority. That's Correct. ridiculousness. And that was my mother's response. She went, oh. Oh, and, and, and perfect and, southern. How nice. Right. How nice. How very, nice. Very nice. Which really means y'all insane. But it's right. funny because she's had to tell that story. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been out of school now for almost a decade, but she continues to have to tell the story when people ask did Mary Lane pledge was Mary Lane a cop right. oh was she this, this was she that not. and she says well this is why not but then one time there was this woman who kind of got a little shady and I guess went home and did some research and then called my mom up on the phone and was like, that was so interesting that you said there were no national sororities at NYU because I see that they have DG and I see that they have Cap Cap Gamma. Like thinking my mom had made up this story mm -hmm. in case 
I had pledged and not gotten a bid. <laughs> oh, goodness. And, like, she thought she had this scoop. And so my mama calls me, and she's like, are you telling me that whole time you could have been a DG? <laughs> and I was like, no, mama, I promise there was nothing there. And then I'm starting to feel like a crazy person, so I go online. And, of course, Kappa Kappa Gamma was um, founded the April of the year I graduated. And oh, DG wow. was founded in 2016. So for any other displaced debutantes who, who end up at NYU, <laughs> You have options. You have so, options. So tell your mama. Well, tell your mama you can go to New York because yes. there's DG and Kappa Kappa Gamma at NYU. Well, I thank you so much for telling your story. I <laughs> want to read a little story from Elizabeth Mamaris in Wilmington, North Carolina. Hey, Elizabeth. Thanks for writing me, darling. Um, here's her story. This is a grandmama made me do it story. Years ago, back when I was around 13 years old, my grandmama told me that my bra and panties should always match because you never know when you may end up needing the services of the local ER and you want the nurses and the doctors to know that you were brought up right. Well, I recently had some surgery and before the operation, while I was under heavy sedatives, I began telling everyone, and I mean everyone, happy as a dead pig in the sunshine, that my bra and panties match. <laughs> I kept saying, my bra and panties match, my bra and panties match. Then, in post-op and recovery, while looking rougher than 10 miles of bad road, I apparently had a total meltdown due to the fact that my bra had been removed for the surgery and I could not understand why I no longer had a match and set. Well, my daughter worked in the OR where I was treated. Bless her heart. I guess it's character building to have your mama humiliate you on occasion. Oh no, I bet she was like, mama shh, mama shh. I know, I absolutely love that story. And now, you know, I was also told that my bra and panties match, and I will say I am guilty of still to this day, I get upset if my bra and panties do not match. Yes. Yes, yes. And you know, it also reminds me of when I was young, I had a surgery and you know, it's amazing the kind of things, these things that float in our minds that our mamas tell us even under like sedatives, you know. but. It's subconscious it's subconscious exactly Absolutely. but I remember you know I, I was going to have surgery and I was young kindergarten first grade and mother was very upset that I was going to have a big ugly scar you know because I was a little girl and so she was obsessed with what we were going to do post-op so as they were wheeling me out of the operation and I'm still loopy they uh the, apparently the the nurses and doctors were like are you in pain are you in pain because they were trying to gauge whether or not you know to give me pain medication mm -hmm. and i kept saying no no i just need some lotion on my scar mom says i have to keep my <laughs> scar moisturized i am six years old and i'm concerned with moisturizing but my she scar. has a point she does have a point because thank you mama Thank you, Mama, because uh, to this day, I bet you don't here's my arm. You cannot see a scar, y'all. No, no scar. That's very tacky of me to lift my armpit <laughs> to the thing. But hey, Mama will reprieve because I'm applauding well, her. Well, because you're telling her she was right. <laughs> that's right. I'm telling she was right. You can get away with anything if you tell your Mama she was right. Amen. Uh, well, thank you so much <laughs> for joining us. And uh, I appreciate all your support for the Southern Women Channel. Oh, I love you guys. I, I've been clawing at the opportunity to get on here with you. Y'all can keep up with Mary Lane on her uh, website website, thedisplacedebutante.com, and you can follow her on Twitter and on Instagram um, at Mary Lane Haskell. Um, thank you all for joining us. Please send me your Mama Made Me Do It stories. You can contact me through our website, southernwomenchannel.com. Bye, y'all. Bye. Hey y'all, guess what? I've written a book. It's called Talk Southern to Me and it's a collection of Southern sayings and Southern stories and I hope it makes you grin like a possum eating sweet taters. You can find my book on my website, southernwomenchannel.com, at amazon.com, or at your local bookstore. Thank you so much for supporting the Southern Women Channel. Bye. Tell your mama, Nim, I said hey.